And I want to ask you a semiconductor question because over the last few weeks, we've seen the United States changing um, the status quo of the relationship in a pretty significant way through comprehensive and strategic export controls that are meant to contain China's ability to develop uh, a core component of its advanced technology. Um, how surprised were you, are you, that the Americans are engaging in that policy? And what are the implications for the security balance between the two countries? So I was not surprised that they did it. I was actually surprised it's taken the United States so long to do this. Um, one of the curious features of the competition with China has been that while the Chinese have made huge advances in many different arenas, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, uh, the biosciences, and so forth, one area where they have been continually uh, frustrated has been the ability to make the smallest diameter chips, the kinds that we get from Taiwan Semiconductor, and we'll, we'll get back to that. The U.S. effort right now is sort of fingers in the dike. In other words, it is uh, an effort to try to make sure that uh, the Chinese have years more delay, but sooner or later, China is going to figure this out. And the question is, along the way, do we make them convinced that the U.S. is so out to contain Chinese technological power that they begin to make moves in other areas, including military arenas? And that's critically related to Taiwan, because right now, in my view, Ian, the greatest defense we have against Taiwan being invaded is the existence of Taiwan Semiconductor. So, but that, that also raises a question of American vulnerability. I mean, if TSMC is not just critical to Chinese semiconductors, but also American semiconductors, not like the U.S. is making these things at home, how, how do the Americans relate to the fact that one of its most important national security assets happens to be sitting 100 miles away from mainland China? You know, if there was ever a reason for sort of a, uh, a commission on American vulnerabilities, one of the first things I would put on their agenda, Ian, would be a study of how we allowed the manufacturing of key semiconductors, not the commodity semiconductors that go into your car or your microwave or whatever, but the real leading edge semiconductors, which the U.S. invented dominated the technology, and then came to the conclusion in the era of globalization that the supply chain around the world was reliable enough that it didn't make any difference where we manufactured them. And, you know, this was a feature of the past two decades. The Europeans did it with oil and gas, being dependent on the Russians. We did it uh, in the semiconductor arena where we were dependent on Taiwan, but many other places. And the vulnerability of Taiwan was never really considered to be a high-end concern until the past few years. And that's remarkable to me. I mean, I want to make this, tease this point out more explicitly because there's been so much criticism in the United States of the proactive decisions of people like German Chancellor Angela Merkel that they were going to allow core aspects of their national security to be reliant, energy infrastructure, reliant on Russia. And the United States, essentially, in ways that are probably much more important, ultimately, to U.S. national security, because at least, I mean, gas and oil, you can buy those commodities anywhere. These semiconductors, you can only buy in Taiwan. I mean, who, who was asleep at the switch in the United States that allowed that kind of vulnerability in a territory that is, frankly, completely contested between the Americans and the Chinese going forward? Well, um, who was asleep at the switch? The semiconductor industry in and of itself, a government, uh, a series of governments in the U.S. that knew this was an important technology, but basically just allowed the capitalist flow of um, supply chain to work its own way. And so if you're looking for political leaders to blame for this, I'd start with George W. Bush, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and Biden has actually, you know, sort of paid attention to the alarm. 
Others raised it as an issue, but when you think back to, say, the Trump administration, they worried about China installing 5G communications in the U.S. and NATO nations, a perfectly legitimate concern, but didn't really do very much in the semiconductor area. They recognized it, they talked about it, they didn't do much. The, here's the challenge right now. You can buy yourself some time by trying to prevent the Chinese from buying these high-end manufacturing uh, machines and the lithography all around it. But that only works if you then turn around and build enough capacity back in the United States. And that's why you've seen the president show up in Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, The other day, he was at a Micron technology facility in upstate New York. You've seen him in Silicon Valley promoting all of this. But the fact of the matter is that while Taiwan Semiconductor is building in the Southwest and Samsung is building in the Southwest, when those facilities are open, it will address under 5% of the problem.